hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Let's have a look at some problems that are to do with sex linkage and co-dominance. So I read a question and before I start, the actual point says students will solve problems involving co-dominance and sex linkage. So you need to be able to both solve problems when it comes to sex linkage and co-dominance. The question could be something similar to this. A man with no family history of color blindness wants to have offspring, so wants to have a baby, with a woman that has color blindness. What are the chances that their offspring will be affected by color blindness? So the first thing you should do is you should realize that obviously in this case the color blindness is carried on the X chromosome because the woman is affected by color blindness. So in this case, the X chromosome is affected. And remember, if we have, so for example, if we say C stands for, a capital C stands for normal vision, and a small C stands for color blindness, we would write that on top of the actual X. Whichever chromosome is affected, we would write that on top. In most cases, it's the actual X chromosome because the X chromosome carries most of our genetic information compared to the Y chromosome. So in this case, if it is colorblind, it has a recessive allele, so it would have a small C on it, whereas normal vision would have a capital C. Right, so we know that we have, the female has colorblindness, which means that she would have to have at least two alleles which are both recessive. If she were to have one allele which is dominant, she wouldn't be colorblind, so she has two alleles which are recessive for colorblindness. And this here is the female. And the male has normal vision. The male has one Y chromosome, which has no genes that are looked at in this example on it. So we just write Y. And the actual X chromosome must be normal because he does not have color blindness. So X and capital C, as he has no problem. And we just do the normal Punnett square once we've established this. We do the normal Punnett square. We put the two X's from the female, which are all recessive for color blindness in here and then we put the two chromosomes for the male in here as well, the Y chromosome and then the capital C chromosome. Now we just do a normal crossing, we'll grab the X, this X here from the female and we'll grab this Y from the male and this will be a affected male the second one will be this X from the female and this X from the male, which is a capital C. So this will be a carrier, but unaffected female. And we'll do the same thing again for this. So this X here from the female and this Y from the male. And that is an affected male. Same procedure again for last. It will be the same as the one above. Small C is so recessive for the disease from the female, but a normal one from the male. So therefore, this one will be a unaffected female. So the ratio we have these two are carriers, but unaffected. So they carry an allele, but they're not affected. And they're both females. So all females in that kind of breeding scenario of all unaffected females. So the females will not have the disease, whereas all males will have the disease. So these two here are both males who are colorblind. So all males are colorblind. So what was the ratio? Well, 50% chance that it's going to be a male, 50% chance is a one-to-one -one ratio. So there's a one-to-one -one ratio, there's a 50% likelihood that the actual offspring will be affected. We could have, we could figure that out using the Punnett square. So two here, two that don't have it, and two that do have it. So it's a two to two ratio, which is the same as a one to one ratio. And if we show that as percentages, that would be 50%. And then you can say 50% are affected, and only the males would be affected. So all males will be affected, but overall that's 50%. You could write that as well. And that would be that kind of question. The next one is a codominance question. So we also have to involve examples, questions for involving codominance. So for example, horse breeders observe three colors in horses, brown, 
Roan. Roan is like this here, which is between brown and white, and white. These three colors are the colors of horses. If a homozygous brown horse is crossed with a homozygous white horse, then all offspring have a roan coat. So if a horse with two brown alleles crosses with a horse with two white alleles, we get a roan horse. First question, a ratio, so what are the ratios when a roan horse is crossed with a roan horse? Well, according to this information, we know that if we cross a brown with a white horse, we get a heterozygous one. And so homozygous brown with homozygous white, we get a, a heterozygous roan horse. So we know this must be a combination of brown and white. So this must look something like this. Brown capital and white capital. That's roan. And then using this information, we just do the cross. So we do, okay, female has one brown, one white. And the male, because we're crossing two roan horses, the male will have the same kind of ratio. And all we have to do is figure out what kind of outcomes there could be. If we get the female capital B, so the brown, and the male brown, we have homozygous brown. So this will be a brown horse. If we get the B from the female, so brown from the female, but the W from the male, it will be a roan horse. Same procedure down here. W from the female and B from the male. That is also a roan horse. And last but not least, we have the W from the female and the W from the male. And this will be a white horse. So ratios are one brown and then two of this roanish color, which is in between brown and white, and one white. That's the ratio we would get. Likelihood so it's more likely to have roan horses than either brown or white. If we are, if we are cross a roan horse with a roan horse. Second one is if we have a homozygous white and cross over a roan horse. So homozygous white, let's say that's a female, doesn't really matter, but it says a female, that would be WW. And the the roan horse, we said that's the heterozygous one. So that would be the male, for example, and that would be BW. So put that into our Punnett square and solve the problem. And then what we get is this W from the female and this B from the male. That would be a roan horse. Codominance, remember? So two of the dominant ones make that a blending. So it's a roan horse. Then a W from this male and a W from this female, well red, and that makes it a white horse. Same procedure here, a W from this female and a brown from this male, that makes it a roan horse. And then the last one will be a white from this female and the W from this male, that's again white. So we have a ratio of two white, so two white for every two roan, so two here, two white, and two roan. That's the same as a one to one ratio, or in other words, 50% chance that will be roan, or 50% chance they'll be white. Right, so these kind of questions are questions that you're gonna get similar to these in the HSC, and we'll have some of the HSC exam questions as well in the actual end of the playlist, if you wanna go for some of those. But yeah, be prepared for these kind of questions. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.